expressed on the Fragments of Silicon podcast do not recommend necessarily represent the, the opinions of actual fragments of physical silicon. Welcome to another episode of Fragments of Silicon. I'm your host, Adam. Joining me, as always, are Gollix and Petty. Um, let us get to the news. Uh, Petty, why don't you lead us off this week? Alrighty, then. Um, mostly quiet. Like, thankfully. <laughs> um... Let's see, I've beat Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2, and, oh god, they weren't wrong saying 3 was a shit show. <laughs> god damn. Yes. And, then, and then as far as um, Sonic Origins goes, um, I am I uh, got the fourth... Uh, Super Emerald in Sonic and Knuckles 3. Or Sonic 3 and Knuckles, rather. The the, the music is... They made some interesting choices. <laughs> A lot of it sounds they added way too much bass. Hmm. Like... I am thankful that I still have the uh, Genesis ROM on Steam. Like, Indeed. Especially since that's the key to unlocking some really good um, PC ROM hacks. Mm -hmm. Like, um, what is that? Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Air Dash or something like that? Something like that? Uh, I, I do like that the, um, at least, Switch version just gives you Drop Dash. Uh-huh. Because honestly, I don't think I can play a classic Sonic game without it at this point. <laughs> I've oh God! Grown, I, I've grown too accustomed to it. Uh, that is me. Every time I go back to Sonic One, I'm like, I. I you know, How do I, we I play to... this game before Spin Dash? <laughs> yeah, <sighs> roughly. <laughs> no fucking kidding. <laughs> um. Like, I'll, yeah, I'll I'll say it. Sonic One has. Uh, Age well, and I don't think it's very good. Mm. I mean, the music's still good, at least. <laughs> right, but it's like, you know, when you compare it to Sonic 2 and 3, like, it's just such a rough draft. But we're getting off topic. Here. Yeah, that's the topic in and of itself. Uh, I also picked up Outrun 2 for the original Xbox. So, that's kind of nifty. If I run... 2006 Coast to Coast on my Steam account. Mm. That's one of the great delisted games, by the way. Yeah. I think this just came. This was the version that came out just before that one. But yeah, that, I've been enjoying you know, it. That's the. That is the first one mm. because there was Outrun Two, there was Outrun Two SP, and then there was Outrun Coast to Coast. Mm. Right. And I think Coast to Coast, uh, finding a copy of that is... Good luck! Possible, but... Um, and yeah, outside of that, uh, not a whole lot to report. We do have the dates for the big store championship for Digimon, so that's going to be fun. We might be moving the... Um, reviews that those weeks to Monday. Yeah, because big tournaments have lots of people, and lots of people make big tournaments go long. <laughs> like more, and more on that later. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, outside of that, not a whole lot to report. Right. Um, well, Galax, your, uh, it's your go. Oh, well, the local anime convention <clears throat> was this past weekend, and I don't feel comfortable enough to go and stay in the hotel and be among that many people for a long time, but I did drop by a few times. And I wore my mask pretty much the whole time, and it's lucky that I did, because at least two of the people that I was with... At or two other people that I know that were there, who are also in my Pathfinder group, uh, tested positive afterwards, and I've tested negative, so... <laughs> Weird, it's um, almost like masks work or something. <laughs> I, I don't think that was really in question so much as the fact that some people seem to think that it's okay to stop taking precautions now just because you need to have a vaccine uh, record to have your mask off in a place or whatever. Yeah, tell that to some of the people local to me. Oh my god. No, no, I know. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad I'm still taking precautions. Um, otherwise, uh, honestly, that took up a lot of my... That and the fact that some of my friends got sick it has taken up most of my thinking lately. Uh, I got a raise recently. That was nice. Um, video game wise, uh, still been playing Pokemon Legends Arceus finally, and a little bit more of Kirby, um, The Forgotten Land. I just, I haven't been able to hang out with my friend as much as I wanted to, and I was hoping to do most of that game two player, but might just go ahead since it keeps getting put off. Um, and I also got, at PortCon, I picked up a box of the new EX set of, of Tamers-related stuff for the Digimon card game, and I kind of want to try and make a D-Reaper deck, even though I understand that it's kind of an annoying thing in the meta currently. I'm having war flashbacks to last week. No! No! <laughs> well, I need more searchers before I can even, before I can really make the deck. I only got six. And yeah. that's, uh, it's, it's a, you can include any number of this card in your deck, and also, the deck basically uses them as a resource, so, mm -hmm. most of the outlines I've seen use between 16 and 24 of them. Damn. Uh, when I last, when I first thought about, and I also could use another one, another couple of the Big Reaper Oh, the 20 cost one? Yeah. The one that is basically says, you should be cheating this in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's a relatively cheap archetype to build because uh, the rarest cards in it are just regular rare. And that's only the Mother D Reaper who is basically a baby except for it's functionally a baby, but it's a weird one. And the Reaper and all the other ones are common, except for, like, one or two uncommons mm -hmm. out of the, like, ten cards that there are. Eleven. Right. Anyway. Hilariously, when I first checked, and I think still, the Searcher is the most expensive one of them. It is, like, a dollar on TCG Player, even though it's a super common card, just because... It's so useful. Not, it only, so not, only, do you, not only do you want a ton of them in that deck, it's also splashable in other decks... Mm -hmm. uh, just because it's a body that uh, it has a thing where it normally costs three to play, but if you don't have one of it in pl in play, you can play it for one, mm -hmm. which is incredibly cheap. So for other decks that just want to have a body on the field uh, to blow up or rest or whatever, um, it's convenient. Uh, and I think that's about all I got. Right, then, uh, to my go, then. Uh, let's see. Well, as mentioned last week, I went to the doctor to get this neck mask looked at. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess the long and short of it is I have to go to a specialist uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Like, um, you know, an ENT, an ears, nose, and throat doctor. 
you know, because mm-hmm. once again, I think I mentioned it last week, but you know, there, as it turns out, there is a whole world of neck masses, and yeah, he said it could be many things. Like, I think um, about it's almost like a lot of important stuff goes through the neck area. If only there was a word in the English language for stuff for an area where like important stuff has to go through to get from one area to another area, but it's kind of all squeezed down in that one small area. Like, um, uh, that aside, uh, I what we I think what we did establish was that it's not related to the thyroid, like. That's probably good. Well, yes. And I guess I can't 100% say it's not cancerous. Probably not. Like, considering I'm lacking a lot of symptoms. Like, you know, I'm not getting fevers, chills, sudden weight loss, um, Mm -hmm. not even a sore throat. Like, but once again, I I can say... Definitively, best guess right now is it's um, an infection. Like, uh, the lymph system is working through that. Um, and as such, I've been on antibiotics for the last week. Like, so, you know, and, and it's been going down. But you know, I'm still going to go to the doctor because, well, that's been... That's already in the works. Um, uh, so hopefully things go well tomorrow. And let me see. Uh, in terms of games, been playing a lot of Duke Nukem. I think that's because I watched a, a number of Duke Nukem related videos for no adequately explored reason. Um. Played a bit of Duke Nukem Manhattan Project, and yeah, didn't like it. I'm like, now is that I one of the 3D ones or one of the really old 2D ones? It's the newest 2D platformer. Ah, I'm like, and yeah, it's done in the style of the old platformers in terms of mechanics. You know, it, it's. <laughs> got like 3D polygons, but it's like it's still awkward to control, especially like the really good kick. Like, I just I really don't have a tolerance for the uh, for this kind of jank. I know Manhattan Project has its fans, but it's like, you know what? I have access to actually good platformers who settle for. Stuff that felt clunky and awkward, but, you know, fit a keyboard. Like, and, and though it does have controller support, but it doesn't really help the awkward controls. Like, so I just loaded up Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition and been playing a bit of that. Though my laptop's been giving me some, um, I guess, thermal spike issues or something along those lines. It, it's a, it's acting up, and I'm worried about playing that game right now. Has um, it been hopefully. cleaned out recently, or uh, in like, terms of what? Like taking a can of compressed air to it. I I don't think I can open this. At least I'm afraid to open this without it, you know, falling apart. And I'm not tech- the uh, proficient enough to. I mean, I've sprayed the outside. Mm, yeah, and without knowing what model you have, I can't, you know, be like, oh yeah, just put it against this vent and just pull the trigger, you know? Right. I mean, I suppose we could quote-unquote look at it later, but I'm yeah. like, I, you know, it's like probably sometime next week because, you know... Stuff and I things. To, yeah. I have things to do, you know, fucking holiday weekends. And, yeah, I'm like, 
um, also a programming note, the Sunday reviews will now be happening on Monday because my brother is coming up for the 4th of July and, you know, he's going to be here on Sunday and obviously it's not, uh, you know, it's going to be very awkward if I have to do the review thing with him around. Well, I'll so, see if I can be available for that. Yeah. Like, so, such is life sometimes. And yeah, I suppose that's it for my news. So, merrily, we shall roll along to the interview portion of the broadcast. And joining us this week is, um, hang on, uh, Martin Furbacher of Daisy Games. Hey, thanks for having me. No problem, no problem. Uh, thank you for joining us, especially in light of the scheduling error that happened. Um, anyway, so how we like to get started is we like to get to know the people behind the games, the studio, and all that jazz. And we do this by asking this particular question. What got you interested in video games, both on a personal and a professional level? Oh, well... Uh, that's, that's actually quite simple. When I was, uh, four years old, I believe, uh, I was playing the expansion pack for Wolfenstein 3D on my grandfather's computer. It was the first game I ever played, uh, Spear of Destiny. And, uh, yeah, it just, just really hooked me. I really liked it, um, despite being four years old and not even being able to read properly. I just somehow managed to figure out how to control the game and I've been pretty much gaming uh, since then. And, you know, um, eventually I learned that certain games, which was way more common back then than nowadays, had some kind of mapping or modding features, right? Mm -hmm. So I got really interested in making my own levels, campaigns, stuff like that. And sooner than later, uh, later it, just, it, just not, it just wasn't enough. And I really wanted to make my own game and... Uh, that's that's pretty much where it all started. Yeah, I play I played one video yeah. game, really liked yeah, it, and <laughs> and that was it. Okay, so you graduated out of the modding scene, is from is what I'm gathering here. I uh, I never got into modding that much because uh, I I just just I just wasn't smart enough. I guess I was definitely more of a mapper. Uh, and it was it was it was quite a journey because I I think the first time I tried to make a game I was like ten years old. Uh, for the record, I'm twenty seven now, and I uh, I was you know I was one of those people who had really ambitious ideas. I, I was thinking about oh yeah my first game I have no experience but I'm gonna make like this huge dream game whatever. And uh, it took me over 16 years to make my first game, actually, because I always got just too ambitious. I had, I had no experience to back it up, and I would start a huge ambitious project. I would, uh, you know, burn out very quickly because I ran into problems immediately. And, uh, yeah, it took me over 16 years to learn that maybe I should, you know, start small uh, and increase the, the scope of my games as I get more experience. So it was... It was quite it was quite a long and tedious journey in a certain regard. Right. And what finally turned the key for you other than uh scaling down? You know, what was your first completed project? So that was a little free web game. You can still play on my HIO profile even and it's a, it's like a little puzzle game that took me like four days to make, and you know I just I just got to a point where I've been trying just for so long to make something that I told myself you know what I'm just gonna make a game in like a couple of days I don't care how it looks like I don't care how it plays I just want to finish something, and uh, yeah you know I I I manage I I just. I just sat down, I, I made a game in four days, and I was like, wow, you know, I, I actually finished something. And uh, 
something like just just changed. You know, I, I learned a lot from that, even though it was very small project, very buggy, you know, very very basic. And uh suddenly I like realized like what it takes to make a game, what what it all goes into it, and I've just been, you know, going larger and larger since then. Uh so this first game released in early November 2020. And my first commercial game saw release in January 2021. So the jump so from the like jump making from like- making a very small game to like making a commercial game was like incredibly fast. You no, know, I made like three three games basically, and then I just suddenly moved on to commercial projects. I'm like, no, oh, I call it a damn burst or something like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like. Because, you know, that, that's a reversal of fortune if I ever heard one, at least creatively. Like, and indeed, uh, from your theme page, I can see that you've made, I believe, four games so far? Uh, yeah, four are released, and the newest one is coming out next month, actually. Right. Right, um, and we got that one on display here, but before we get into this one, we should probably cover your other projects a bit, um, starting with uh, Hackrid, um, which is a retro puzzle game. Um, are they all puzzle games? Uh, so far, yes, yes. Okay, I suppose, that, I suppose that's a good overall question. Um, what has uh, attracted you to making puzzle games? Yeah, so uh, it goes back to the first game, right? Which was also a puzzle game. Uh, I I was thinking what kind of game I could make, you know, and I was thinking about all the kind of genres I tried to make games before, right? So we're talking stuff like RPGs, Metroidvanias, first-person shooters, and... Um, I was thinking, okay, if I'm going to make a game in four days, it needs to be something really simple. And I don't know why, but the first thing that came into my mind was Sokoban. I was like, okay, well, you know, let's make a Sokoban. Let's put some little twist on it because I wasn't interested in making exact copy of Sokoban. I wanted to, you know, uh, do a little spin on it. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's, 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 that's why it's a puzzle game. And the second game was a puzzle game as well. And uh, I realized it's fun to make them, and uh, people people have been really enjoying them, and that, that's why I kind of stuck with it, at least for the time being. I am definitely interested in branching out in, in the future, though, into different genres. I'd imagine so. I mean, have all of them been Sokoban variants? Uh, no. So Hagrid itself, actually, it's not, it's not really Sokoban. It's still like a pathing puzzle game, which I guess you could describe a lot of puzzle games. You could say that Witness is a pathing puzzle game, right? Because it's about finding the correct path in the puzzle. But uh, games that are like pure, that are like like uh, very heavily Sokoban, that's two of them. So that would be Dark Sheep and uh, my newest release title, Sokobos. Okay. And what differentiates these from classic Sokoban? Okay, so in case of Dark Sheep, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to assume you're familiar with Sokoban, right? Yeah, um, I guess uh, I'll take a little aside for those who might not be familiar with Sokoban, especially um, in the West, where its uh, name is probably best known as Boxel. Yeah, like, there's but, probably um, some block pushing puzzle based on Sokoban you've heard of, but the actual name itself is yeah not as but, uh, predominant here. Yeah, but um, Sokoban like classic is about pushing boxes into certain into specific areas, and um, and especially and classic Sokoban is especially rigid um, because you know. When you push a block or a box or whatever the cube is, um, it's pushed. Uh, you know, and the goal is to get everything in the spaces without, you know, running up against a wall. Uh, it's a very simple puzzle game. Um, 
you know, it was all over the Japanese computer scene and um, had a Game Boy version uh, ported over here, yeah. among other things. And there have been a ton of variants uh, and clones and all that stuff. You know, uh, probably a good, um, more famous example over here is like Chip's Challenge, mm -hmm. which is, you know, not quite so fun, but uh, fairly close. And yeah, I mean, that is the basics. But, you know, much like Rogue, because the game has been copied so much, there, you know, we get very interesting variants these days. Um, and, uh, you know, going back to the original question, you know, what makes Dark Sheep and Soka, uh, Soka Bows? Is it Soka Bows or Soka Bros? Uh, Soka Bows, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, what makes these two uh, Sokoban descendants stand out? Yeah, so uh, regarding Dark Sheep, the biggest difference is that, you know, like you said, uh, the original Sokoban formula is very rigid. And huge part of that comes from the very narrow level design. So we have, like, actually very little space to maneuver in each level. Um, so in Dark Sheep, uh, the game is about mostly uh, pushing sheep on grass to eat it. And your the, the mostly the player movement isn't restricted at all, but the sheep movement is restricted. So the sheep can only move on grass tiles, and once the sheep moves through it, uh, the grass gets eaten, and the sheep cannot go on it again. So you don't really... So the, the space where the sheep can move is limited, not the player, most of the times. And also, like, uh, two sheep cannot take the same path. So that's, like, the biggest change. And, of course, you know, compared to traditional Sokoban, there's, like, a lot of uh, elements. Things like, you know, bridges you walk over that break. Um, and uh, there's also, like multiple grass types. So some sheep can only move through this grass, other sheep only through this grass. Then there's like a grass that like changes the type of the sheep. So, you know, there, then there's, there's these little nuances that like seem like a little small things, but when we combine it all together, uh, it just becomes uh, very, very different. Um, so that would be the, how dark sheep is very, dif is very different. As for succubos, uh, Sokobos is definitely more, way more closer to the original Sokoban formula, uh, including its rigidness. But it changes the fundamentals of the block pushing itself. So in Sokoban, it doesn't really matter where each crate goes, right? Like As long as you get the crates to their destination, that's fine. So in Sokobos, thematically, you're building, you're building structures. Uh, the story of the game is that you're building you you're building a temple for Zeus, and so each block has a specific part where it goes, right? So like one block is top part of pillar, other one is middle, other one is bottom, and that really changes the puzzle because you're not only concerned about finding the correct path where to push things, but also there's order where, how you have to push the things. And, you know, of course, as always, there's the extra mechanics. So, for example, uh, some parts need to be rotated. So you have to move them through a special field that will rotate the part. And, you know, you have to make sure it doesn't rotate too much. Uh, there's painting. So some parts need to be painted first. Uh, there's also, like, obstacles you have to push out of the way. So, again, there's, like, these little small elements, or I guess you could say extra mechanics, that seem relatively simple. But once you put it all together, it's, you know, it's just... Uh, it just it just melts your brain, and, and you can spend like 20 minutes looking at a level, thinking like, oh, how, how do I slow this one part? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely played a lot of puzzle games like that. Sokoban among them. Anyway, um, so a lot of this is be, um, establishing up to your upcoming release, which is yet another uh, Sokoban uh alike yep. in, but this one is probably more categorized as a hybrid because it is Soko Chess which is 
well, Sokoban meaning chess. Um, and I suppose my first question here is, um, why? Why fuse chess with Sokoban? Oh, uh, well, um, I, I, I just really wanted to make another Sokoban game, and I was thinking how to make something that hasn't been done before, you know. Uh, I wasn't, like, interested in just making another Dark Sheep or another Sokoban right. game. And um, I, I've played some chess puzzle games, and I was like, this is such a great idea. Like, chess is such a simple and widely known premise, right? Uh, yeah. And I, 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 I was, you know, I was, I was, I was angry at myself for like not coming up with some of these ideas and like doing them before. I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm making a chess puzzle game. And yeah, I, I was like, well, I really like Sokoban. I want to make a chess puzzle game. You know, what if I combine uh, those two together? And I played with the idea, and, and you know, uh, within 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 few hours, I was like, this this is great. I'm, I'm doing this. <laughs> Gotta say that upping the ante because. Um, you know, once again, revisiting uh, because you're combining Sokoban with the rules of chess, if I'm understanding this correctly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so has it been difficult coming up with puzzles that, you know, meets the criteria here? Well, the puzzles have been uh, it's I think the hardest part was actually like uh, getting everything programmed and working well together, because uh, the game is very different fundamentally from everything else I ever made before. So in okay. each of my games, you basically just just solve the puzzle and that's it. But in Soko Chess, you know the black pieces, the opposing side is actively playing against you, right? right. Yes. So right. Um, there's like other side involved, and it's a very simple AI, you know, but still. Uh, it creates this dynamic where it's very different from anything I ever made before. And uh, funnily enough, you know, a lot of the puzzles when I was playing around testing things, uh, they kind of make themselves. Uh, although I will say, despite of the levels being like very small and generally not taking as many moves as my other games to like finish level, um, to make sure I get things right, everything works, and the solution like isn't isn't in some levels what like way too easy, too brain dead. Uh, some levels took me like really, really a lot of time to make compared compared to my previous games. Once again, that does make sense um, because you know you're working with a just fundament not not just it's coded differently, but this is a fundamentally different game. <laughs> and um, are all the chess pieces? In, represented in this game? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's everything. All, all of them. Yeah. And that's another layer because uh, we have covered some, you know, chess puzzle games on the program. And, nice. you know, well, it's like, because um, it's uh, chess puzzles games can be very scalable. And that is to say, you can create an entire puzzle game set around one figure. Like um, a game called Knights Hop comes to mind, which is all about knights and knight movements. And, mm. you know, you, you can do the same thing with bishops and rooks as well. Yeah. And, you know, that's got its own parameters, but, you know, I do believe that is favored by some developers because you know that that is um, an even narrow focus of chess. You, know, you you don't have to worry about not just having the knight movements, but you know having the bishop movements calculated as well. Like, but uh, anyway, and what made you go with a minimalist aesthetic with, here? Oh, so that that goes all the way back to you know my very first game. Um, I'm a really bad artist, <laughs> and I. So I, I should just say that Soko Chess is the first time I have an actual artist, designer, and uh, like uh, you know also person who does the graphics on team. Um, 
So, so we just kind of went with the minimalistic approach here because that's what I'm used to. And also it's our first time working together. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, we start small. We don't go overboard with, with the art style um, because even though I have someone who can do graphics, there's a lot of communication and a lot of skills I have to pick up. Uh, turns out it's actually quite difficult and challenging to like communicate your ideas, even if it's just like one extra person on the team. You know, if something is in my head and I'm doing the graphics, I just draw it and that's it. But sometimes I can spend like half an hour com communicating and uh, making sure like I, I, you know, transfer all the information to the other side that I want to. And then, there, then there's, of course, you know, going back and back and forth. Um, but yeah, in the case of my previous games, you know, it was just like I'm bad at graphics, uh, so I would use like a very limited color palette, which would help me make things look uh, cohesive, which I think is much more important than like having fan uh, like fancy graphics. Um, and in the case of Soko Chess, yeah, it was like okay, I have a person on team now, but uh, I've never like uh, you know directed a person before, so let's let's keep it minimalistic. And also another thing is that. Uh, I think minimalistic look goes really well with puzzle games because clarity and readability is like super important. And I think the minimalistic style like uh, really helps you to keep focus on what's important for the puzzle itself. We have had no shortage of those on the program, including a couple up for review this weekend. Oh, nice. Um, and, you know, also works well with uh, platformers. Um, anyway, um, so you mentioned you're a collaborator this time around. Uh, mm -hmm. What made you set to do that on this project? Oh, uh, well, so I, I have an ambition to actually uh, turn this into a full-time business. Uh -huh. And after you know after after playing uh, sorry after having multiple games out and you know doing a lot of research and talking to other people um i've learned that like you know unless you get lucky and uh, some really uh like people really pick up your game or maybe some you know huge streamer picks it up and shows it to thousands of people and stuff like that um really the best thing you can do for your game is that it looks good and attractive because people uh, you know they 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 judge games by how they look, right? And that leads to their purchase de decision. So it's in your interest uh, if you're, you know, if you have financial motivation uh, to to make games, uh, to just have your game look as good as possible. And you know, since I'm a bad artist, uh, I figured, hey, you know, it would be great to have someone on team, so the quality of the visual quality of the game can increase incredibly. And yeah, I finally found someone who was willing to jump on board with me and join me for a project. And is your um, partner local or you uh, communicate remotely? Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's actually <laughs> she, she's the fiance of my good friend uh, who's over in Mexico. I'm in the Czech Republic. So, yeah, we're we're, we're an international team, uh, even intercontinental team, team, I guess you could say. <laughs> Yes, I think you could. And um, how much more development do you have to do on Soko Chess? Well, it's it's pretty much nearing a finish. Uh, I'm just you know doing some final playtesting, uh, moving some things around for uh, the purposes of you know uh, smoothing the difficulty curve. And right now we're just mostly like finishing up the localization. How many languages? Uh, so we have four. We have we have of course you know the English language. We have Spanish, and then we have uh, Czech language and Polish. Okay. I'm like uh, I'm assuming it's not that big of a conversion. Given that uh, I'm assuming it's like menus and such, because I, I don't imagine that this game has a lot of text in game. Yeah, pretty much. It's just menus. You know, there's 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 where there's some tutorial here and there, uh, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do the localization because I have attempted localization before, and uh, funnily enough, Sokoches is my is my first game after a while that has no story. 
So like think games like Dark Sheep, Dark Rift, Sokobo State, they had a story. And Soko Chess is just like purely puzzle game. So that definitely and helped with the scope of the localization. Indeed. And well, ha- has that been an adjustment? You know, just, you know, developing a pure game, for lack of a better term? Right. Oh well, it just uh, it just it just kind of happened, you know. Um, I I wanted to make the game, but I just I just like couldn't figure out a way to, with the how the game was designed and made. Uh, I couldn't figure out like a way to put a story in there. Uh, so I was so I was like, you know what? Let's not force it. Uh, let's let's just focus on the puzzle dis- design this time around. Uh, I'm I'm not sure like how how that will be received to be honest, because I've been getting a lot of praise. From uh, players and reviewers, uh, likewise, you know, for my other games, including stories, and they were like, you know, and they often say like, oh, well, it's not usual for the genre, but it's like a very nice, refreshing spin to have a story. So I don't know how that will do, but you know, I always focus on making the best uh, game possible. So I, I am. So far, the the response from testing has been very good. So I'm 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 hoping that people will be okay with the game focusing purely on the puzzle aspect. Hopefully that works out. And let me see here. Uh, one aspect I don't think we've touched on at all is music. Uh, what are you doing for a soundtrack? Oh, so uh, I hope you like classical music because we have pretty much a classical music soundtrack yeah, for, for the game. I mean, it, it fits well enough. Uh, just- yeah. It like, was it was it was quite quite the obvious choice. I it didn't t- even take me like much time to come up with that idea. <laughs> like I said I, I, it works. Like uh, and this here, so I can see that uh, you participated in the uh, recent Steam's uh, Summer Next Fest. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did that go? It's interesting. So, you know, I the first time I joined a Steam Festival was last year in October. And one thing I've noticed is that pe- game developers are catching up with the fact that, like, Steam Festivals are good. Which has resulted in my game getting much less attention when I'm streaming it as part of the Steam Festival. Uh-huh. But despite of that, uh, the amount of wish lists I get just keeps increasing so it seems like that each time i join a festival it goes better and better so yeah i've been you know when i when when the streaming happened i was kind of bummed out because last year i peaked at like 1.5 thousand concurrent viewers this year i didn't go over 500 but it doesn't seem like it really had an effect so yeah i was I would say the result was good. I'm I'm pleased. Good. And I suppose my final question is not necessarily about this game, but um, what do you envision after you're done with Soko Chess? Another Sokoban uh, variant or another puzzle game? Or will you try another genre? Oh, so that's that's a very good question. I'm still undecided. Uh, I do have actually a uh, old school 2D platformer project in the works, uh, but since it's like my first forte into into the genre, it's you know it's it's like it's like it's like on the sideburn. So it's something I'm gonna be making more over the time uh, because there's a lot for me to learn. Um, I would I would like to participate in the in the, in the next Steam Festival with my next game, so I'm gonna have to make that decision rather very quickly. Uh, I I have a lot of puzzle game ideas that I really wanna do, so I think the chances of it being a puzzle game is uh, is, is pretty high. Okay, fair enough. And uh, I'll see if my colleagues here have any further questions for you. Uh, I think I'm good. Alex? Wait, what? <laughs> Do you have any <laughs> questions? 
Oh, no, I'm good. Sorry, I was distracted. <laughs> Clearly. All right. Um, well, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule and being with us here today. Um, or tonight, uh, in your location. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, the rest of Soko Chess development goes smoothly. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll review the game when it comes out. But till then... Uh, oh, I suppose I do have a final question. Have you decided on a price for Soko Chess yet? Uh, yeah, so the current plan is the game will be released for uh, 9 99 or your regional equivalent on Steam, and there will be a 15% launch discount for a week. Okay. Um, so there you go. The game is Soko Chess. It is coming soon. I see it's a planned release date of sometime in July. Um, yeah, uh, we're, we'll be making it official very soon, but the planned release day is uh, 29th of uh, July. Okay. Um, so the game is coming out uh, July 29th for the price of $9.99 with a 15% discount on... Is it Windows only, or will you be able to get it on the Mac and Linux? Oh, all my games are Windows, Mac, and Linux. So Soko Chess will not be any different. If you have a computer, you will be able to play the game. Right. Um, well, thank you, and uh, good luck. Uh, Penny, yeah. play the it, uh, to the next segment. Thanks for having me, guys. Welcome to the topic of discussion. So, um, in keeping with um, the month of June, uh, whatever plans we had uh, going into this week got upended by a sudden Nintendo Direct. Thanks, I Nintendo. I mean, people were <laughs> expecting a Nintendo Direct. But maybe, maybe, maybe not a partner Direct Mini, although for a Mini, this one was pretty big. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Nintendo has an interesting uh, definition of the word mini. Since it ran a half an hour, that is the size of some actual... Yeah, and it, cover, and it covered some fairly significant releases. Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 albeit no major first-party ones. Yeah, so no, well, no Metroid Prime 4 this time, boys. <laughs> well... Okay, keep in mind, Nintendo, this is the second Nintendo Direct of the month. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, they did a dedicated Xenosaga Chronicles 3 Nintendo Direct last week. Blade, but yes. Yeah. Um, which upset a great many people because <laughs> that... You know. Twitter was fun. <laughs> yeah. But, you know... Like, the people were up, and I get it, I do. Um, it's June, it's E3 season, or Summer Game Fest season, however you want to define it. It's like, you know, this should be the time that Nintendo lays out their cards for the rest of the year, and they haven't done that. Like, you know, we don't exactly know what their big uh, holiday game is. Um, yeah, because do know, they even have anything big that they announced earlier in the year that we're still waiting on this year? Yes, yes, we are. Um, Splatoon 3 is coming in September. Mm. Um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's coming in no uh, November. But uh, keep in mind, Pokemon is always its separate little corner. I was going to say, Pokemon mm -hmm. is Pokemon. Like It's also the number one thing that's least likely to get actually delayed because, you know, colossal merchandising machine that if they have to delay the games, they'll have to delay the anime and they'll have to delay the movies and they'll have to delay the merchandise. And, merchandise. and, yeah. and I'm pretty sure the Earth just explodes if Pokemon gets delayed, so let's not do that. Un unlike most other Nintendo things, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Um... And Bayonetta 3 is, um, 
I believe, still coming out this year, but doesn't have a release date. But, uh, I'm you know, going to be honest, I forgot Bayonetta 3 is still a thing, because it's, it's been rumbling, has been so fucking quiet, it's not even funny. I mean, it had a gameplay trailer, the last major Nintendo Direct, I believe. You know, but um, you know stuff that's usually releasing. You know, next few months they have a couple more trailers. You know, maybe right. some Twitter buzz or something like that. But like, well, I mean, that, that, that's my point. Like, it doesn't have a release date yet. Mm. So, like. Um, though I think this is suspected to be the October game. Um, possibly. And, you know, it's like, um, you know, Advance War one, uh, 1 and 2 Boot Camp is still indefinitely delayed. Yes, I'll be yes. Honest. It, uh, one and two, Advance Wars Reboot Camp is on hold until uh, Blue Moon is no longer involved in objectionable military maneuvers in the real world. <laughs> Oh, honest, I laugh, but that's... Yeah. I think Reboot Camp is dead. Like, Nintendo's just washed their hands a bit. I, like, I don't think it's fully dead. I think it really depends how long the stuff, you know, gets somewhat sorted out and isn't as sore of a subject. Yeah. Like I, I guess, think it's they, coming. They, they put enough in work into it, and it's presumably basically done. Yeah. So, I would not be surprised if there becomes a tenable international situation for it. It gets released at some point, yeah. but I'm also not betting anyway. when. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, Nintendo has not laid down their cards for the rest of the years uh, fully yet. And we don't know when that's happening. Um, or if. <laughs> well, obviously, they're going to have to do that sometime. Yeah. You know. But, yeah. So, what we got was the Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. Um, and, yeah. Not a lot of people were expecting anything from this. Um, mainly because, let's be honest, Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcases have been fairly lame. I, Usually they have connotation of being fairly subpar indie showcases and not a whole lot of good AAA stuff. Yeah, this one bucked the trend. Yeah, it basically kicked the trend in the teeth and is currently watching it bleed in an alleyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to go over, actually. But I think I'm confident, like, at least... The, the most immediate thing that exploded out of the conference, um, no, we're not going in order, but um, is the Mega Man uh, N Battle Network Legacy Collection. Like, um, yes, at long last, we are finally getting um, a Battle Network Legacy Collection. Uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how the ports of that go and how they will handle certain things. But I mean, also, it also, be, also, how well people think the games have aged. It shouldn't be too bad in that uh, direction because they're Game Boy Advance games. Mm -hmm. you know, oh no, I'm talking about stuff like the. Some of the games had event battle chips that were distributed in various ways. Uh, some uh -huh. of the games had. Um, peripherals that they were compatible with that I believe I have read that functionality is just not being included for. Yeah. They made like a literal thing that you plug into the uh, cable port on the GBA uh, and you can use physical collectible battle chips with a couple of the games. Um, but I assume that was never even brought over to America, so we won't miss that. But yeah, Also, you um... know what I have to say? Considering how well it's aged, I guess when it came out, it was kind of a ludicrous thing that someone could hack your stove and <laughs> cause it to spit fire and set your house on fire. And now that's only moderately unlikely. So, you <laughs> know, there's that. <laughs> yeah, battle. Yeah, battle. Um, so, as I understand it, this is going to have all the mainline titles. Um, it said, like, all 
uh, ten Battle Network games. Yes, so, which uh, is one, two, three blue, three white, four red, four blue, five colonel, five blues. It's Proto Man, but I'm sticking with it. Uh, six Falzar and six Gregor. Right. Uh, and, does not oh, include the GameCube one. Does not include mm-hmm. Battleship Challenge, although I don't know how anyone would f- fucking care. Does not include 4.5, which was never localized in the U.S. Definitely does not include the two goddamn Japanese pre-smartphone mobile phone games. <laughs> well, didn't one of those require um, connection with that one... What's it called? The almost like Digimon looking Battle Network V Pet things. Uh, four point five was almost unplayable without the peripheral I mentioned before that let you Fair send enough. in battle ch- physical battleships. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, it's mostly it's almost like a virtual pet thing. Hmm. It's it's more simulating actually having a pet and a navi and going on adventures with it. So there are like daily and weekly mm-hmm. events and. You don't really get battleships in the game much. You get some, but not a lot. On the other hand, it let you play as, like, a wide variety of navis, uh, if you got the things for them, so... That could be nice. Um, yeah. and then, yeah, the two canon... The, the two cell phone games are actually canon, and they're kind of cool, but, um... They also use a significantly different uh, game engine and stuff, so I'm not surprised they're not included. Well, and also I think their story was roughly touched on in, like, one of the later seasons of the anime, so just go watch that. Uh, it used some of the characters. I don't know if it used the actual story. The anime very much decided to do its own thing after a while. That's right. (laughs) Like, after about three, I think. (laughs) Like, yeah, it's when not it bad, it's just very different. Yeah, and um, I guess we're also running low on Mega Man collections. Um, obviously, this is not the last one they could do. They did Classic, they did X. Wait, did they do Classic? Yeah. Uh, I assume they did Classic at some... Okay, yeah, they did Classic, they did X, they did Zero and ZX... Uh, yeah, they're now th- doing was... Battle Network. Legends. Uh, Legends is right. Le- th- I was getting to that. Legends is the one that they haven't done, and uh, I guess considering Star how much Force else... too, but <laughs> Star Force also. Uh, Does anyone well, they... really want that? No yes, one wants especially... that, but it... Star Force. Okay, Star Force is actually good. Uh, to each their own. Okay, Star Force Three is very good. Star Force 1 has a good story, but clunky mechanics. Star yeah, Force 2 has a not good story, but improves on the mechanics a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and Star Force 4 never, is one of the three big Mega Man sequels that never got made. <laughs> yes. Alongside Legends 3 and ZX, something to cover what the fuck Master Albert is up to. Or Master <laughs> uh, Thomas, excuse me. Albert was the one that they did cover what he was up to. Right. Um, I'm sure we could go on and on about this, but there is much more to cover here. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, including a remake, remaster um, of Pac Man World. And, you know, it's being called Pac Man World Repack. Like,. That's out of the because, TNQ be, because because they'll give you that one for free. Get out <laughs> the, the name. Yeah, yeah, that's Bandai Namco's <laughs> doing here. Like, well, I, I'm gonna know because people were wondering, you know, why like Pac-Man World wasn't, um, you know, the Pac-Man World trilogy wasn't included in Pac-Man Museum. Like, well. Th- Here's your answer. They wanted to do a remake of it. Well, they kind of have to, um, you know, because um, this is one of the titles that, um, you know, is under the Miss Pac-Man embargo. Yeah. Because, yeah, Pac-Mom showed up, and 
I'm going to assume that's not Junior Pac-Man in that game. Like, I'm not sure if it was uh, originally. Like, all the Pac family wasn't created by uh, Bandai Namco. So, yeah. you know, they're off limits. Though it was good to see that the random Puka is still there. Like, mm-hmm. anyway, um, that is coming August 26th. Uh, let's see. Um, Konami stunned the world by announcing a new game. <laughs> in- <laughs> Yeah. In Super Bomberman R2, which is... I mean, it's it's just a sequel to an existing game, but, you know, that's something. Well, it, it's, it's more Bomberman. Didn't they like, discontinue to R1? Uh, you're thinking of Online. That's right. Uh, yeah, which is a different game. That was the thing that was made for Stadia. Mm. And... It's being presumed, um, and I know Bomberman R had its issues at launch, but um, it uh, allegedly it got better after like the year of DLC and updates and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know I have Plus, you know R- it's a Bomberman game, which is uh, yeah. Let's just say better than some of Hudson's things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, uh, anyway. Um, in a bit of a surprise, Return to Monkey Island showed up here. Yeah, that um, was an actual, like, holy shit, what? <laughs> no, this uh, this had been announced previously. Huh, like, I must have missed that one. You did. Like, Return to Monkey Island is significant as it's being billed to the true sequel of Monkey Island and Monkey Island 2. At this least until whole- they make a new true sequel. Well, no, here's the thing. This is I, I know what you by... mean. It's it's a sequel to the installments of the franchise before it stopped being popular. No. This is being helmed by the actual creators. Of... Uh, okay. It's one of those. It's like, you know, we're going to ignore the games that weren't made under our supervision. It's still like... also the other one. Right. One and two are the ones that everyone agrees are good, if I understand, if I remember correctly. Um, Monkey Island 3 has its fans, let's say that. I said um, everyone agrees, not no one. Monkey, like, I still hate that fucking ending, but uh, mm-hmm. this is going to finally address that infamous ending. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, as far as Shadow Drops goes, uh, this time it was Portal, the Companion Cube Edition. Um, which is which is Portal, nine. but now on the Switch. Also, yeah. Portal Two and most of the other associated bits. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's like I, I didn't see a lot of enthusiasm for this one. I, I'm sure some people are excited to have Portal on the go, but you know, I mean, if this was pre I, uh, pre Steam Deck, maybe, but well, it's awesome. Well, keep in mind the the Nintendo Switch is a much wider audience. Fair. And you know and it's also a statement that, you know, um Valve's last proper single player game is like over ten years old. Yep. You know. I'm not saying that they couldn't bring, say, uh Dota two to the Switch, but you know, there might be technical hurdles there. Obviously, Half Life Alex is out. I mean, Half Life Alex is out for a lot of stuff. Yeah. And anyway, uh, in obvious announcements that only got announced um, at this conference thing, uh, we got Minecraft Legend. I remember there was a lot of chatter. Um, about this game not getting announced for other platforms, but mm-hmm. you know, uh, clearly they were holding back for other mm-hmm. uh, things because it is indeed a Minecraft game, and it's coming to, you know, um, it's coming to other platforms. Because uh, and it's along Minecraft. those lines, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and this is the segue into the 
quizotic announcement that, you know, Persona 5 Royal, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 3 Portable is indeed hitting the Switch. Like, to the shock know, people, of no they just, one. They just decide, well, they just decided to announce it separately after uh, a week or two of people making fun of them being released for everything but the Switch. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we don't know why Atlas did this. Did this, but they did this. Mm-hmm. Like, also, we will have to see how they perform on the Switch, which shouldn't be too bad, except for maybe five. But we'll see. Um, three and four should work fine. It's um, specifically five Royal that I'd be concerned about. If it was regular P five, it would probably also five work probably fine. Probably. But Royal has a bunch of upgrades that might not make it run very well on the Switch. I suppose time will tell. Indeed. We'll see. I mean, there there are some other games on the Switch that have good uh, perf- or a let that are have good graphics that have been announced. So we'll see how it goes. And also, at least it's not a uh, fucking remote play only like the fucking Kingdom Hearts three one. I don't. We're not going to get into that. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Oh, uh, speaking of Square Enix, um, they had a bunch of stuff announced here. Um, th- uh, like, the big port, I guess, outside of, like, the multi-platform stuff, <clears throat> is near Automata, uh, as it's getting a Nintendo Switch edition. That's Not the other one I was talking about, yeah. Yeah. Either. Um, this is the end of your ha edition. Which is going to have like some new costumes and um, and it will have all the DLC included. Um, not sure how compromised this uh, edition will be. Um, they may or may not. I mean, they presumably will have to decrease the graphics fidelity somewhat, but hopefully the gameplay experience will still be, you know, good. Mm-hmm. Um, that's coming. But we on. now live in the era of you really can't be sure when they announce a port for a system, even if it's not a system that is less powerful than the previous thing it was on. Um, also announced was Harvestella, which is a new game, a life sim RPG, mm-hmm. where you farm, collect items, collect materials, and go about your everyday life. You know, it's their take on Harvest Moon. Yeah, it's definitely not like Harvest Moon or Rune Factory or, you know, Stardew Valley. Yeah. And there's a whole uh, bunch of uh, previous announced games that got, like, release dates, like, not Live Live, that already had a release date, that that got a Mm -hmm. demo announcement. But, uh, like, Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope got a release date for October 20th among other things. Like, I don't know. That, it feels a bit tedious to go through those. Mm-hmm. Like, um, Sonic Frontiers made another appearance. Um, this time showing off their cyberspace zones. Yeah. I mean, at least they're doing something that's more than just the open world stuff. Um, let's see here. Uh, I guess the hero of the, uh, of the, or at least one of them was Railgrade, which is a railroad management sim. Like, I don't know, it's like, it's just always weird when I see a game like this coming to console. Because this is such a PC type of game. I mean, it also depends on the country. Like, I know those type of games do a lot better in, like, Japan and stuff like that than they do over here, but... You're thinking more Germany, because this is more... Like, Japanese rail simulators are are in general different than... Fair enough, yeah. European. But, you know, I will grant... Yes, there is the A-Train series... But like rail simulator, like um, like Densha D Go, if I'm remembering that like the title one. It's more about being the train conductor, and you know, um, piloting the trains themselves. 
um, versus managing the entire railway. Fair enough. It's a it's a fine distinction, but a pretty big. Um, anyway, uh, we should probably wrap this up. Mm. Like I said, um, a bunch of, um, yeah. So a whole bunch of stuff is coming to the Switch, um, and other platforms like the, the Battle Network Collection is also coming to the PlayStation Four and Steam, for example. Um. And yeah, overall it was a very solid direct. Like, uh, and presumably there's going to be another one soonish. Hopefully, because <laughs> well, once again, like Nintendo still needs to lay down their card. Mm-hmm. Um, and we would don't we know love exactly- to see information on you know Prime Four? Yeah. Are we going to well, see information on Prime 4? Probably not this year. Well, the rumor is it's, uh, like the big holiday game is going to be a remastering of Metroid Prime 1. We'll see how that holds, because I feel like that rumor has been clocking in for at least since the Wii U era. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, yeah, since the Switch has existed, there's been rumors of a fucking... Prime series switch port. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that'll about do it for uh, the conversation. And indeed, that'll about do it for this installment of Fragments of Silicon. Um, the week ahead, we do have a new episode of Moonhawk Studios Presents. Um, last news desk on left edition, because... Well, we have some politics to talk about this week. Like, always fun. I mean, no, it's not going to be very fun. It's probably going to be very angry. Um, because, you know, people will die. I will say that in the here and now, but... Anyway... Um, as far as fragments goes, uh, we do have a Friday show this week um, happening on Friday, July 1st. We'll be welcoming Sasha Darko, uh, indie game developer, on the program. Like, no assigned studio from what I saw, um, but uh, she is the developer of the Sacred Line series of games, um, which is a adventure game series that. Not just retro. It's one of those um, uh, retro games that's a, that aims for the classic platformer uh, platforms. In this case, um, Genesis, Mega Drive. Um, we'll get into that on Friday with Sacred Line Two. And coming up on the I guess Monday reviews, uh, we'll be having reviews of Neko Hacker Plus, Hexon, Color Grid. And eight eyes. Yes. Um, just wanted to make sure I had the right week there. So, until Friday, I or, you know, about 15 minutes from now, depending on who you are, uh, we shall wish you good gaming.